All right, everybody. This is Jonathan Kiley with Fly Skins, and today I'm going to show you the Log Slider Craw. That's this guy right here. Um, it's been a great pattern for me. I think you'll enjoy. I'm going to show you how to cut it out of the exo skin. Here's another version I did this morning. Brown color. All right. So here what we have is the exo skin. Uh, it comes in a four by six sheet. The color I've really been uh, like using here um, lately is the purple an olive color. So you have this 4x6 sheet. Okay. So how do you cut it? Well, I get asked this all the time. Can I cut it with uh, razor scissors? Can I use a paper cutter? And regular, you know, razor scissors is probably by far the most effective way. Um, I've used the Dr. Slicks, the Loons. Um, that's the only two brands I've tried right now. I really like the Loon. Um, they've got little bitty serrations in the blade. Uh, here you have the tensioner knob right here. This thing um, is something you adjust as you get used to using the tool. Don't over adjust it when you first start out. You should uh, feel a slight resistance in the scissors as you use it. Now, one technique when using scissors and cutting exoskin is to get a good feel for it. And sometimes, I don't know if you guys know or realize you're doing it, but you can push and pull to create that same tension that that tension knob does um, when you're cutting it. So occasionally you're gonna basically want to make sure that you're doing that so what I'm talking about is that you can bind these scissors closer together by looking at how they're angled so I'm gonna basically if I wanted to do that naturally with these pair of scissors I would push away with my thumb and pull with my middle finger that here it's locked into this so just basically close that gap alright so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut the strip for the shell I'm gonna make it about half an inch and if you do the four inch section or width first what you can do is you can basically cut this and you can get two crawfish out of this one strip so I cut that in half and then I go in and I cut the curve to it the cool thing about these razor scissors it gives you a lot of control and you can actually come back in and do some really fine uh, tuning and trimming with this Okay. And as you'll see in the video, this is um, easy to tie in. That's just the shell part. Okay, so put that aside. Next part is the um, the claws. So how do you do this? Well, the way that I do it, you can either use the fly skins, fly stencils, um, or you can freehand it. Today I'm gonna, just going to freehand it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three bumps or like oval bumps essentially on one side. Okay. So go in. Make sure you've got enough um, blade that when you're cutting these, you do your one whole loop or half loop, so to speak, your oval. Okay, so I've cut those like that. And then I'm going to come around. I'm going to finish the end where I want the claw just a little bit bigger oval. And I'm going to work my way down. And I just want the outline of the claw. So it's pretty easy. Alright, so here you have this. Now what do you do? Well, I want enough blade. Again, I want to complete this cut pretty much the whole way in and out. So I'm going to look, see where I want it. I'm going to start. I'm going to work the skin through the scissors, help it along. Okay, I mean halfway there. Anyway, continue. With these razor scissors, you get a lot of control. And check that out. One clean claw was good. Alright, cool. So I'm going to finish this cutting up, and you guys will get to see the video on how to tie it. Alright, so here we are now at the bench. We have the uh, 2 aught 60 degree bend Daiichi 4630 hook. Uh, they come in different sizes. I think 2 aught all the way up to 4 aught. I'm using the 2 aught here in the vise. I've got some Vivas. This is the 3 aught thread. This is just a rust color. You can use all of whatever color you want to match. Uh, I'm going to be using some Fly Enhancer Legs by Hairline. Uh, this is the light olive and it's got a little purple and green flake in it. I like this color because it kind of matches the dubbing and the exoskin that I'm using. Um, I'm going to use the, uh, it's called Cohen's Carp Dub. I think it's called Olive Bar. I've got a stash full um, 
in a box so I don't have all the colors saved but basically what it has in it that makes it cool to use for this pattern is the uh, basically little rubber legs all in it very similar to the Senyo's Shaggy Dub which I have uh, mixed that as well with some Senyo's um, Fusion Dub and you can get the same kind of effect if you bought the Hairlines card mixer um, to make your own dubbing so that works well too there's plenty of different ways to do this now that dubbing is it's pretty long which is good for those but if you wanted to scale down this pattern you could easily use the um, Hairlines Shaggy Dub which is like um, it's got like a rabbit dubbing and some of the same rubber leg mix but since it's that natural fiber it's going to be a little bit shorter so that actually works out pretty well I use that on my damsel flies as well alright so let's get started I'm basically going to do a rough wrap with a thread here doesn't have to be too pretty next step is I'm going to take some .30 lead wire I'm going to wrap that about a third of the hook shank and I'm going to go just right over the bend and then one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth over this lead just to help keep it from rolling around and moving give the front of the hook here or the back of the hook I should say a little more thread base as well alright so the first step what I do is I take the fly enhancer silicone legs and I'm going to I don't know, let's see how many that is about nine or ten strands probably about a third of the piece here and you're going to use that whole chunk you just pulled off I'm going to cut it about inch and a half off here and that's going to give me about three quarters of an inch roughly of these sticking off the front right in the middle flip it over tie it again alright next thing I do is I'm going to put on my claws now the reason why I decided to uh, put this up front it kind of helps the claws stay from coming back up and around the hook when you're casting and it keeps it from uh, fouling on the hook does it happen? yeah probably still will happen every once in a while but it won't be nearly as bad alright so these are the claws I cut I have a whole bunch of them, I have a whole stash of them I just do a whole bunch at one time and then I make a bunch of flies so I'm going to tie this in essentially on an angle as you can see there lock it in place I'm going to do the next set same thing kind of on an angle alright there you go bring this back over and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this dubbing and I'm just going to roll this part on first just to save time the beginning because the next step I'm going to use basically a dubbing loop with it and I just want a little bit of a bump because what it's going to do is going to give it a little extra body before I do the uh, this, this carapace part before I go ahead and uh, tie in the back part of the fly or the crayfish so to speak alright so now I'm going to take my I'm going to use some wire here 
This is olive, ultra medium wire, the medium size, sorry. Green or olive. I'm gonna tie this in. This is gonna, it's gonna help tie the shell down of the exoskin. Okay. Now the next part is a dubbing loop. This is something that uh, a lot of guys use. Um, just to make a stronger hold for your dubbing. I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to make, these are about six inches long, these loops I'm making. I'm going to do four strands because I've done two, I've done three, and occasionally what you can do if you get too tight, especially with large dubbing, you can uh, break these and I don't like breaking them off when I've made my dubbing loop. Take my dubbing spinner here, grab it, let it sit down, and let it rest off the edge so there's tension on it. I'm going to take that carp dubbing here, I'm just going to pull away from the whole cluster to elongate the fibers. It doesn't have to be perfect, just got to get enough. And then I hold it with like this, slide it in the dubbing loop, work it up, and let it hang. I still want to put some more on and use a lot of dubbing for this but you'll see why you want more you want to build up that body and you're gonna brush some of it out so I'm just pulling this out elongating the fibers put in a nice row put it between these strands you can use dubbing wax too to help you hold it in place but I've gotten used to not using it all right spin your dubbing tool here. This one's made by Stonefo. Love this thing. Hairline also carries this. I'm just wrapping this around. I don't want to cover right to where the lead is. Take my thread. I go back and forth over the end of the thread there. If you notice I had just enough to get right where I wanted to be. That's just practice. Trust me. Go a little over, no big deal. You go a little under, no big deal. You just make another loop. Trim that off. Flip back over. And I really want to make sure this is locked down before I do this next step. So make sure you get your good thread on there. Tie a whip finish in there. Real quick, make sure. In case you drop it. Now I have my shell, which I showed how to cut that as well. Basically, um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to pierce it through where I want it. I'm going to go about half an inch in here. Stab it right in the middle. goes over the barb. Grab the fly. Unlock it from the vise. And then put it back in. Okay. Alright. So now what I can do is I can take this and push down on it. I'm not going to stretch the material back. And the reason why is because otherwise it'll flip up the front here. I don't want to do that. You can do that once you get back a few loops if you want, but it's not really necessary if you do it right. Okay. Pull down nice and tight and give you those nice, cool, defined segmentations. If you get dubbing caught up into the wire, no big deal, you can brush it out or just leave it honestly I don't think it's that critical One more I'm gonna flip this forward get out of the way tie it down twist this off all right now I've got my exoskin to tie down I'm going to do a couple good wraps in front, a couple in back here. And make sure you leave a little bit of room because you're going to put your little legs on the back. Now stretch it and cut it and it'll go down to nothing, all the way to the thread. That's why it's important to have a good tie down point. Okay, so before we do the next step, I'm going to throw a little quick half hitch whip finish in there. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to take my stone faux brush. 
I'm going to brush this stuff out. I'm pushing down, letting it lock in like Velcro, because that's kind of how it works. I'm going to brush this out and then forward. It's going to give you a nice look to it, like legs and the little fins on the back of the crayfish. Like I said, if you have that wire, you can literally grab it like this and brush it out if you care about that. If you get legs you can see where they're locked in there, you take the comb side, brush them out, they'll come right out, they'll stretch and pull and untangle themselves. It's pretty cool. And you got a little extra bugginess to it. Okay, so that's done. Now I have the rest of my silly legs. I'm going to trim that end off. Now you can stagger these or you can leave them straight. Honestly, I don't think it really matters because when this thing's in the water and the, thing, and the fly is being stripped in or drug across the bottom, they're going to be floating around. It won't really look that jagged to begin with. I'm going to find about my halfway point. I'm going to fold it just over the eyes there so it's split evenly. Pinch it down. Do two wraps there for now. And I'm going to pull it. I'm going to grab these legs and I'm going to grab it underneath because I want somebody underneath and I want some on top. And then I'm going to lock this down. Build up my thread base. One thing I really like doing on this, if I have time, if not, it's really no big deal. Take whatever glue, super glue, and get threads down. You know they're not going anywhere. Um, I also like taking glitter and epoxy. I'll mix up a batch and I'll do a whole bunch of these at once. And um, I just put a little bulb of epoxy on the end there and it looks cool and it's more of like a finished product, I guess, but you don't really need to do that if you don't want to. So, there is your log sliding craw. Go ahead and cut some of that excess off, but it is done probably been one of the most fun and cool easy quick kind of patterns out there for a crayfish it's got a lot of action in the water and as you can see in the video or you're about to see is uh, how I'm flipping it behind a dock and hooking up on some bass and it's only going to get better as the season goes on those larger bass are going to move in uh, the females and the little males will be uh, pushed aside probably to grab this thing after a while so Mix them up green or this olive color with the purple is a great color for this time of year in the spring. Uh, a lot of vegetation is coming up and the crayfish, they're eating on that and they usually match the vegetation as well. You get into some rocky areas, you know, you, you might see some green browns and light browns and whatnot uh, for the springtime. So it's a great color. They love them. Crayfish are probably underfished um, because uh, they're just a pain to tie sometimes or you know people don't have confidence in them but trust me after uh last couple months i have a lot of confidence in these it's been springtime where i'm at for a long time or at least the season's a lot warmer so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed thank you